Hi everybody. Hi everybody. Today we're gonna be doing foam eruption the fourth, but today I'm outside. Try and guess what I'm doing. If you guess something really big, you're right. Because today we're gonna be doing what some people call elephant's toothpaste. Elephant means big and toothpaste means colorful and ch mm -hmm. So I think. you'll need four ingredients to make our big elephant toothpaste. One is about 20 milliliters of liquid soap. Number two is about 50 or 60 milliliters of 30% potassium iodide. And this is about 120 milliliters of concentrated hydrogen peroxide, aka 30% peroxide. There are a few stuff I noticed from watching other sources. Even if they never told me the recipe, I did realize that they use these two liter, very tall. Hey, you mean the uh, cooking recipe or what? No, the chemistry recipe. <laughs> okay, now I realized that the flask had to be about a foot tall, which is two liters. Always use this because we tried it ourselves at a hundred milliliters, and look at, and we actually got some of this reaction. Mm -hmm. It was just like our old ones and it just leaked out of the bottle. However, this is a hun this this 120 milliliters of peroxide, according to my calculations, will give more than 11 liters of gas, which is more than enough to make an eruption. Next we and last but not least we have food coloring. This is up for obviously the color. So, Ryan, you ready for the experiment? Let's go. First off, let's pour our liquid soap into the flask. This flask is absolutely huge, isn't it? Mm. So now that we poured in our soap, let's pour in the 30% hydrogen peroxide. Now remember, 30% hydrogen peroxide is not like the 3% you can buy at the store. 30%, unlike 3%, can cause burns on your skin instead of curing in your cuts. If you uh, 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 touch it, uh, it will turn your skin no. white and you mm -hmm. must need water and lots of soap. Mm -hmm. This is because of the high concentration of hydrogen peroxide. Now, I'll teach you the best way to make your color. The best way to do this is to make your food coloring you know, slide from the walls, not ripping it in directly like our other ones. Like into the window. Like mm -hmm. Do it at the other end. You can see that the red color is spreading due to a process called diffusion. Mm -hmm. It looks a lot like blood vessels. Yeah, blood vessels. One blue vessel. Blood vessel one. Lastly, Blood vessel two. Lastly, we need yellow. In the middle. Mm -hmm. You said you're gonna do it at the wall, not mm -hmm. on the middle. But remember, a rainbow goes red, orange, yellow, green, blue, and then purple. But because yellow is in the middle, we gotta make it make the yellow go in the middle. Got it? Mm -hmm. Now, for our last step, we need 30% potassium iodide. Ready to run from mm -hmm. the explosion. Okay, ready, Ryan? Yes. Okay, you ready? One, two, three. Oh, it actually looks quite nice. Already a snowman. Mm -hmm. Snow, snow, snowman. But it's so ha ha ha. 
Actually, it went up a decent height, Ryan. Didn't it? Yeah. Really, it went up like a little bit, but it still was better than the last ones. Yeah. Did you guys enjoy the results? I okay. hope you like it. Mm -hmm. There are two things you need to know. One is that the eruption is so hot, and because there's iodide ions involved, it will stain any plastic that's used as their bottom. So, always get some plastic wrap around your surface, or else it'll be stained yellow or brown. Also, the foam produced here is very hot because of the overall reaction released quite a lot of heat. So, if you're cleaning up, Wait for a little while for it to cool down. If you see it, it's so beautiful, but if you want to touch it, don't touch it. Mm -hmm. Now, let's go on to the explanation on the reaction that took place. Now, let's see the reactions involved in the elephant toothpaste. The overall reaction is the same as the last one. 2H2O2 equals 2H2O plus O2. However, in more detail, it looks a little more like this. The reaction just means that one hydrogen peroxide molecule reacts with one iodide ion from the potassium iodide to form water in OI- or hypoiodite. However, this ion is short-lived because it quickly fuels in another reaction, where another hydrogen peroxide reacts with the hypoiodite to form water and iodide. Because it's back to iodide, it can now continue fueling in this reaction. And then the reaction continues. Because the iodide ion isn't actually used up, it's called a catalyst. Like I said in the last video, catalysts just speed up the reaction. However, they don't actually get used up. This reaction is incredibly fast, and it also produces a whole bunch of heat which is why I told you to not touch the foam, or at least right after it erupted. So wait for it to cool if you're cleaning up. Now, I'll explain why hydrogen peroxide dissociates. This is because of its structure. Structurally speaking, hydrogen peroxide has oxygen-hydrogen bonds, which are strong and short. However, this is because shorter bonds have a tendency to be stronger because they have stronger attractions. However, it also has an oxygen-oxygen bond, which is more of a weak and long bond. This weak bond is easily broken by a whole bunch of stuff, such as, let's see, yeast, because it releases catalase, which can break the bond, potassium iodide, like, the, like you just saw, and later, we'll be using potassium permanganate to break the oxygen-oxygen bonds. But that's a thing for later. Next, we'll see why I told you to wrap it in plastic. Now note that the structure of plastic isn't actually like this. This is just to give you some visual info. Why I told you to wrap it in was because iodine, especially molecular iodine, in fact, only molecular iodine, has the ability to seep in, in the structure of plastic and then make it tint yellowish or brownish. In fact, this is the same fate that actually happened to my own sink because we were cleaning up after our failed runs and then the iodine somehow seeped into the plastic of the sink. Now, this is... Now let's see where I got my 11 liters. <coughs> So, <clears throat> we, with a little bit of research, 30% peroxide equals 9.8 molar hydrogen peroxide. Molar equals moles per liter and is a concentration unit. One mole, in case you didn't know, is 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd power of a substance is one mole of a substance. So, if we add a mole of hydrogen peroxide here, then we would have 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd power atoms, I mean molecules of hydrogen peroxide. We also have something called molar mass.
molar mass is the overall mass of a substance in grams. Now, let's take hydrogen peroxide since it's going to be an important part of our equation. Hydrogen peroxide is H2O2, H has a mass of 1, and O has a mass of 16. Because there are two of each, we multiply both of them by 2 and then add them up. Then we have 34 grams as the molar mass of hydrogen peroxide. Okay, so first, let's figure out the number of moles we had. So first, we have 9.8 moles divided by 1 liter times <coughs> 1, 000, wait, 1 liter per 1,000 milliliters times 100 milliliters. With the, with the knowledge of division, we can say that the milliliters and liters will cancel because if we have one of a unit in the, in the numerator and another in the denominator, they will just cancel each other out and go away. Then we only have moles left in our equation, so this is an effective way to figure out how many moles of peroxide we had. Okay, so overall we get 9.8 times 100 divided by 1000 moles of hydrogen peroxide we used. <clears throat> if we calculate it and round it up, we have 49 50th moles of hydrogen peroxide in solution, or at least the one we used. Let's round it up to 1 mole of hydrogen peroxide. Next, we need to apply this equation. This equation states that 2 moles of hydrogen peroxide dissociate into 2 moles of water and 1 mole of oxygen. Because we only have 1 mole of the peroxide, we can change the coefficients to 1 H2O2 becoming 1 H2O and half O2. As a quick side note, the half coefficient of molecules is very rare, so I, we're not going to be using it for a long while. <coughs> Because the coefficient is half, we now know that we will have half mole of oxygen produced. Next off, we gotta calculate the molar mass of oxygen. One oxygen atom is 16 grams, so because oxygen has two oxygen atoms, O2's molar mass would be equal to 34 grams. And because we only have half a mole, we would divide it to form 16. And by the way, it was actually 32 grams. Also, 16 grams of oxygen. Then we divide by the density of oxygen, which is 1.5 grams per liter. Because in division, when you're dividing fractions, you have to change the numerator and denominator to form the reciprocal, which would make, instead of 1.5 grams per liter, we would have 1 liter per 1.5 grams. The grams cancel and leaves us only with liters. We divide 1.6, I mean 16, by 1.5. Okay, so I calculated that 32.3 liters of oxygen was produced. 32 divided by 3 liters is close to 11, which is exactly what I said at the beginning. We will have a stoichiometry series later, so I recommend watching that in order to understand all this. Also, if you think these chemicals will harm your kids, we actually have a kid-friendly DIY version of the elephant toothpaste. This one is using the stuff found in the household, which is the first aid kit grade 3% peroxide 
along with some harmless yeast. Thanks for watching, and see you in our next foam eruptions. Bye! Hope you like it. See you next time. Bye. Bye. And also that thing. Subscribe and like. Mm -hmm. Good luck to all.